Hi everyone, we're back. You know, one of the things I'm always talking about with regards to our aircraft that we maintain is the life of the hoses and how they need to be checked regularly. So your typical rubber hose, mil spec, mil 6000 hoses, have a life expectancy of about eight years. I think the shelf life is eight years, so somewhere around eight years you ought to be replacing those things. In this case, we're doing a new installation. What I want to show you is how easy it is to just do this on your own. Okay, so hoses come in all different kinds of varieties. This is a stainless steel braided hose that is Teflon lined. So the Teflon hoses, unlike the mill spec hoses that have an eight year life expectancy, these are lifetime. At least we think they are so far, right? Lifetime sometimes I think is uh, a, 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 sometimes used too long. Here's a fabric braided hose that is non-Teflon lined. Now, my reason for pointing out the differences between these hoses is not only has to do with their life expectancy, but if you look here, we're actually going to use different kinds of fittings. <clears throat> if you can zoom in and see this one here, a fitting for a Teflon hose requires a ferrule on the inside, and the other hoses do not. So you want to make certain that you use the right fitting for the hose. Now, where can you get these hoses? Personally, I find a good source to be aircraft spruce or even Summit Racing or some of the speed shots. They've got a lot of the good, what I call aircraft quality hoses. Um, obviously, AeroQuip makes them as well. The fittings with AeroQuip can get really, really expensive. I find the Summit, the Earls, Frigola, and some of the other fittings more economical, and they're just as well. I've not seen any failures with those and hundreds of aircraft that uh, we've used them on. So let's look at some of the things that we need to do to actually make this happen. We'll start with the easiest hose first. That's just your stock braided hose. Okay. And this, in this case, we're going to use this as a, a, a fuel line overflow. So we're not going to get regular fuel flow through this line. So we're not going to be concerned about it being Teflon lined. So we've cut it to the length. <clears throat> I want to show you how you actually do that. I marked this one here ahead of time. And it's no different whether it's the braided line that is fabric covered or stainless steel covered, what you want to do is have a handy roll of duct tape, okay? Um, now you can also use a cutoff saw, it goes very quick for those of you who might have those, but typically in most shops don't have a cutoff saw. So what we're gonna do is mark where we want to cut it, wrap some duct tape pretty tightly around there, then just kind of put it in a vise, don't clamp it real tight, and get a hacksaw. Now, I like using a hacksaw with a 32 teeth per inch. It makes nice, fine cuts. And you'll see here, we're just going to start. Comes off very, very easily and nicely. So the next step now is to actually remove the duct tape here, so we're gonna peel that off. Can you show on the helicopter how you decided what length to make it? Yeah, what we'll do is, that's a good question, Carol. So I'm gonna, this line is an oil pressure line. I'll connect it where it goes on the, on the sensor. Okay. And then I just, Ran, you know, kind of hold it. I know I'm going to attach it here with some Adel clamps on the engine mount. We're going to come up right to where it goes on the out on the oil pressure output here, and I'll put this fitting on. Just held it there, and we know the hose needs to come up right about there. So we mark it, and then we cut it. Great. As you saw. Okay. So we'll get this back off. So one of the first things we want to do after we've cut it is make sure we get the debris out of the line. So I'll just put a compressor on it, blow through it, okay? And then take a look in there and make sure there's no debris hanging up, okay? So we're going to go back to the braided line here just to show the difference. So here's a braided line. So what we're going to do now is take, put these all back together, okay? This is the bottom piece. So we're gonna put this in a vise. 
and now push this up into the fitting. Oh, tighten it enough. This is one of those, if you make a lot of hoses in one day, your hands are going to get sore. So what you want to do, if you can, can you zoom in on that? Let me get some light. I want to show you. You've got to move that hose up right to the bottom of the threads. Okay. Got a good picture there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that looks like we've got that one where we want it. Yes. So now I'll put it back in the vise facing up. And I'll take the piece that we're going to screw in there, which is this. And I'll put a little dab of oil on it, just some motor oil or three-in-one oil. Okay, I've just put some in it too, but you can just you can use some three-in-one oil. Okay, and I'll rub some oil right here where it's going to go in and on the threads. That'll just prevent galling and makes it go in a lot easier. So we're going to push this. Now, one of the things I will also do with a marker is mark a line right there on the hose, we want to be careful that we don't push that hose down. Okay. So I'm usually pushing up on it, and then I'll get this started. And you can feel it catch, turn. And then it's just a matter of using the correct wrench. In this case, since it's a dash four fitting, it's going to be a 9 16 wrench. All right, we'll put this on and then just tighten it. So I hold this up to make certain. There we go. All right. You can feel it when it bottoms out. It's nice and tight. And then I will do a pull test on it. I'll pull it in and then just give this a real hard pull. We know we've got it in there. Okay. In this case, this, this is a, a line that's not going to have a lot of pressure. Now, I'm a firm believer that fuel lines should all be fire sleeved in the engine compartment. So what we're going to do with this one is grab some fire sleeve over here. So here's some fire sleeve, and then what we're going to do is just mark the length here that we want. On there. And then <clears throat> what you So can, you don't cover the fitting with fire hose? We're not all the way up. You've got to have be able to get you'll see I'm going to cover quite a bit up, but not you've got to be able to get a wrench on it. Okay. Okay. So here's a nice set of uh, basically PVC cutters. They work really nice for cutting fire sleeve without fraying it. So you just put that in there, squeeze it down, and it'll cut right through. There we go. Now, you do get some fraying. So what you want to do, remember that roll of blue tape? I told you that's so handy in the paint to have in the shop. I'll take a little piece of blue tape here and put this over top of the fitting. That way when I shove it through, we don't get any fibers inside the hose. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is secure this fire sleeve to this hose. So basically, <clears throat> you do that. These are called bandit clamps. And then here's a tool. This is an economical tool you can get from aircraft spruce if you're not going to be doing this for production. Let me find the part that's missing here, right here. Okay. So what I do is I mount this in the vise like this. Way it's easier to work with. Okay. Now, oh, you can see this. We're going to take this bandit clamp and put this so that we can cut it. So you want to put this through the slot like this. And then here's our little rotor chill. What I do is put it in the slot there, push it forward a little bit just to get it started so we can turn it. Okay. And we're going to take our hose, put it right back in there just below the fitting. 
in turn, and you can see it tightening right up there. All right, we'll tighten it all the way down. Okay, and then this just cuts it, comes right out. And what I'll do is take a little pair of needle nose because this thing is really sharp. You don't want to get cut, get your finger snagged. Put it 90 degrees. I just bend it over, squeeze it tight, and then bend it down. Well, we don't snag our fingers. We'll do the same thing for the other end. We got a nice piece of fire slave fuel hose. Okay. So that's the straight hose. Now if we look at the Teflon hose, what are the differences on the Teflon hose? So remember that ferrule I mentioned is different. So if you look at this hose, it does look different. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. You can actually see the little Teflon liner. So <clears throat> first thing you want to do is get this ferrule, this bottom part, over top of here because we're going to spread this hose out a little bit. So feed that in, feed that through. And then with a little screwdriver or an awl and some glasses for us older guys, you're going to actually just very carefully nudge the braid away from the Teflon liner. Okay. Then remember the ferrule I mentioned right here. So this ferrule has to go right on this Teflon liner. You push it down. On the outside? On the, on the outside of the, between the braid and the Teflon liner. And just push it down till it's all the way at the top there. You can look inside and see we've got right up in there. See that? And sometimes you want to make certain and cut out if there's any little bit of little Teflon piece hanging up inside there. Just reach in there with a little razor blade and I'll cut it out. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to take our fitting and we got to carefully push this down inside that Teflon, not pushing the hose down. So you saw that one in the very nice. Now we're going to run this up and tighten it just like we did the other one. So again, what I'll do with these is put it in a vise. Like this. Get an appropriate sized open end wrench and the size it should be uh, 5 eighths. And we'll just go ahead and hold this and run it all the way up tight again. Okay, right there, bottomed out. We'll do our pull test. <clears throat> there we go. So we've got a nice oil pressure line here with the fittings at both ends. This is just an oil pressure line, so I'm not going to fire sleeve it. There's no need to do that. Uh, just all the fuel lines are the ones that we want to fire sleeve forward, or in this case, a helicopter aft of the firewall. All right, so as you can see, no excuse for not replacing those hoses. In a timely manner, you can get all the parts you need from Spruce, from Summit, from any of the speed shops, including the hose. Some of the automotive shops have this stuff as well. And uh, you love new hoses.